live from Denver, Colorado, it's theCUBE. Covering Commvault Go 2019. Brought to you by Commvault. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Commvault Go 19. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman, and Stu and I are pleased to welcome to theCUBE. For the first time, we have Chris Powers, VP and General Manager at HPE. Chris, welcome. Thank you very much, thank you. I was telling Stu earlier, you know, long time watcher, first time participant. All right, well, awesome, we love that. So here we are in, in your native area of Colorado. We were just talking about the weather, which is probably a topic if you live or visit Colorado, that is always an interesting conversation because it changes. Rapidly. So rapidly, exactly. You guys had snow last week, we had beautiful weather. Well, at least so far this week, but I only got in last night. Well, stick around to this weekend because we'll have some more snow. All right, I brought some boots. So Chris, talk to us. You've been a long time HP guy. Let's have just kind of a status of the HPE Commvault relationship, the partnership, what's going on there? Absolutely, so Commvault is a, is a key important partner to HP. We actually have an arrangement via a capability we call HPE Complete, by which we actually skew up Commvault products we go through the background working with Commvault, making sure that we have application integration so that customers have a lot of confidence in that. And then a customer or a partner can buy a complete solution on a single PO from both companies. Um, so it really provides that ease of you know, transaction, ease of um, uh, evaluation, and then confidence in the delivered solution that they, that they purchase from HPE. So confidence and, and uh, simplification are great from doing a transaction. Talk to us about how Commvault and HPE are working together to really help customers in this multi-cloud world that a lot of them are living in have confidence that they're able to access secure data in a, in a way that is as simple as it can be. Well, there's a couple things. We have, we have integration with Commvault products with, with a number of our, across a number of our platforms. Um, Commvault is the backbone for our HPE GreenLake backup as a service product, right? And what that gives is the, the confidence and the capabilities of having a cloud-like experience for your backup environment, but it's managed and, and controlled on-premises. So it, it brings the benefits of both. With the Commvault IntelliSnap technology, we've got that integrated in with our HPE Primera 3PAR and Nimble platforms. And that makes snapshot management much, much more seamless and much more of a core portion of their data protection strategies. So there's a number of, of connection points that we have, and we will continue over time to just continue to, to broaden that exploit that, you know, where the opportunities exist. Yeah, I, I just had a conversation with Craig Rutledge last week uh, about GreenLake. Bring, bring us inside your customers and you know, how some of their buying patterns are changed. Uh, GreenLake's actually been around for about nine years. I, I, I hadn't been aware that it had been around that long, but you know, cloud and as a service, uh, Commvault's talking about there's a new SaaS offering that they have. Uh, you know, storage used to be just something you thought about with a box. Now, you know, software is one of the key delivery mechanisms for how I you know, manage and deal with my data. That's correct. Well, you know, <clears throat> A lot of the consumption models changed you know, quite a bit over time. And, and, and there are more and more, we're seeing more and more of our, our customers really being more interested in not purchasing the box. Really, I mean, the box delivers something. And really this is shifting to, towards, more towards purchasing what is being delivered, right? And so that's why these as a service models um, are really that significant. They're, they're a market changer in a couple of aspects. First of all, it changes the economics, you know, from a, from a consumption standpoint about what are you purchasing. Second thing it does is it pushes back onto the vendor more of the responsibility of the day-to-day -day maintenance and the activities, right? It offloads. And so you can be using these, these IT, you know, compute storage services really focusing on them to bring your business outcome, as opposed to spending a lot of your time and energy managing the infrastructure itself. Yeah. 
Chris, of course we've heard a lot about data this week. Uh, one area I'm, I'm surprised I haven't heard about it much, maybe I just haven't been in the right conversations, um, is AI. And I know, uh, I, I've talked to your peer, Patrick Osborne, quite a few times about how AI uh, is impacting your portfolio. Maybe help us understand how it fits into this, this whole discussion. Certainly, it, you know, it's, it's really in two forms. One is AI to support um, your infrastructure management itself. Right, so a key component of our strategy is something we call the global intelligence engine. And that brings with it a combination of really monitoring what's happening in, within the environment, creating from that a set of, think of it, fingerprints associated with workloads, such that we can begin to trace and understand, based upon those fingerprints, if there's something changing in the environment, applying rules-based AI, to understand what an immediate type of response is. So that's how we're using it to, to simplify infrastructure management because it is amazingly complex to what it used to be years ago. The second way though is actually bringing to market capabilities that support AI type workloads. And that's the stuff that Patrick's really focused on with our MAPR, with our um, blue data you know, integrations. And it's really, it's, so it's bringing both of those sets to marketplace, one to help customers better manage their environment, and then one effectively being able to utilize those tools to then manage um, uh, their businesses. And this is part of your, the intelligent data platform strategy that HPE is talking about. Can you, can you kind of walk us through that IDP pitch? Absolutely. So, first and foremost, it starts with workloads. Right, and it's workloads, uh, workload optimized systems. That being either from your primary, from your file based, from your object and secondary, all the way to managing your cloud capabilities. And it's providing that workload um, mobility, data mobility across those platforms, right? We layer on top of that, this notion of the global intelligence engine, right, that I've already spoken to. And then, and then what we have is effectively been able to make sure that we have SaaS type plugins for infrastructure management, right? Plugins into Kubernetes, Chef, Puppet, and so forth. And then also optimizing from an application standpoint what is necessary from a workload standpoint, from a data protection standpoint. And all of this then focused at consumers, right? Be it the data administrators, be it the line of business, owners being at the, the, the IT infrastructure ops people. So it's, it's really this layered set of capabilities, but, it's, but it starts and ends with workloads, right? We don't talk about platforms, it's really how do you optimize the, the capability set for a specific set of workloads, recognizing that the data associated with those workloads needs to transition over time. Yeah. Chris, wondering if you have any uh, customer examples that might be able to illustrate uh, the, the power of HPE plus Commvault. Um, certainly, you know, just reflecting back to the, the um, backup as a service, you know, via, via HPE GreenLight, we have a number of large customers that utilize GreenLight for their core of their operational activities, right? Just recently, we took down a number of large deals in Europe utilizing HP with Commvault to provide that in a, in, a, in a backup environment managed by, by, uh, by, by HP GreenLight. Yeah, and from the, the, the value of doing that is that, you know, obviously there's simplicity. Um, you know, does that have an organizational change to how they think about their, their data protection once they, they leverage GreenLake, or? Well, definitely upon, you know, when they're leveraging GreenLake, because no longer do you have this army of, of backup administrators, you know, sitting within, within your, own, your own company, right? You are procuring a service. Right? You're no longer having to take care of it and manage that infrastructure, be responsible for it. And we take it upon ourselves then to also make sure that that infrastructure is being continuously updated, refreshed, basically taking that headache of IT management away and focusing on the business outcome. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, to, to just you could probably give a good kind of long-term view of this. How do you see that as different from, say, the previous trend of outsourcing uh, that we've gone through? So I think that, that trend to outsourcing, um, a lot of times that turned into, you, once you played it out over a couple of years, turned into more of a game of asset sweating, 
right? And so, you know, th this notion of continually keeping up from a, from a serviceability standpoint, optimizing the capabilities, I think it was more focused from an asset utilization play as opposed to delivering a service. I think the real change now is delivering a service and what does that involve as opposed to, like I said, arbitrating and, and, and taking advantage of an asset play. So when we're talking, you mentioned the term business outcomes a second ago and my ears perked up. So whether you're talking about, whether it's a large retailer or it's a bank, for example, talk to us about some of the business outcomes that you guys together with Combo are helping customers achieve. You talked about kind of the consumer focus, but in terms of kind of like distilling that down to how an organization is maybe delivering new products and services because not only is the data protected and it's available, it's recoverable, they've got, the AI to be able to, to glean insights from it. Favorite story maybe that shows like business transformation by leveraging HPE and Combat together? So I think you know, the, the best stories there are really in, in regards to, given that we've freed up resources from that day-to-day -day operational attack activities and coupled together with, as you, as you mentioned, you know, the, that AI type understanding the insights. What it's really doing is it's allowing companies to really accelerate from a flexibility standpoint. It's that notion of flexibility and speed to be able to react quickly. And, and we're seeing that occur across a large number of customers. And that's really what's differentiating customers in this new, what we call the intelligence era. It's that speed and agility to adopt those new quick, adopt new business models, new opportunities, quickly change on a dime to recognize when things are changing and then chase after it and take, up, take the opportunity. So as we're here at, at day one of Commvault Go 19, this is their fourth event, but a lot has changed for them since Sanjay Merchandani came on board just about, what, nine months or so ago. I'm just curious, you've been a partner a long time. Your perspectives on maybe this new Commvault or this Commvault 2.0 that, that you're seeing that HPE is partnering with? So I think it's, it's refreshing, right? It, it builds into it a new energy, right? A new sense of focus, and, and it's really, I think, as all of us within the, the, uh, the IT industry are recognizing, it's, it's, it's this whole notion about service and customer, it's really it's a customer experience and the service enablement that we provide from infrastructure capabilities. I mean, we are providing the tools to allow these companies to accelerate. And so I think it's really great, it's really great. You know, companies need to go through a transformation, new leaders come in, breathe some different viewpoints and so forth, and I think it's very healthy. Cultural change is always challenging to do, but in some cases, it, like you said, it's, it's refreshing. They've also done a lot, even with, with the launch of Metallic yesterday, just in terms of how quickly we're seeing them go from ideas to you know, conceiving uh, technologies and delivering them quite quickly to not just their kind of sweet spot of the enterprise, the large global enterprises, but you know, down into the mid-market. So in terms of that speed and agility, I think they're articulating that and showing that pretty well. As, you, as to your point, customers have to have the ability, whatever size they are, whatever type of industry they're in, to be able to react quickly, to take advantage of the next wave or be on the front of that next wave. And having right. an infrastructure that is smart, that is optimized, cost efficient, is as table stakes to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, and, and I think what they've been able to demonstrate this week, you know, as part of their, their announcement set, is that flexibility, that awareness, that there's continuous opportunities to be chased. Excellent, well Chris, we thank you for joining Stu and me on theCUBE today, telling us what's new with HPE and Commvault. We appreciate your time. Appreciate it, thank you very much. Chris Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Commvault Go 19.